Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In this Blender video, I'm going to show you how to add full body fur to a character model from scratch. We're going to add all of the necessary hair modifiers and we'll go through a couple of the tweaks that you'll need to know. Okay, so this is the character file. First thing that you're going to have to do is come up to the top left of your screen here and get that little plus and drag this out to the side. And that'll give us a place to put the um, hair curve library, and then pull down this little drop box here, go all the way to the right to the asset browser. And inside of Blender, there are some hair assets that come with the file. So you don't have to go grab these anywhere. And I'll pull this over and I'm just gonna click on the hair one. And then I'll expand this a little more. And this shows um, a bunch of hair nodes that we're gonna use when we start to add the hair. Okay, so to get started, um, first I'm gonna show you the materials. So having good materials underneath the hair helps to um, hide the fact that the hair is not as dense as it could be in reality. But here is the file. It's just got simple skin and fur materials. And then I've added a vertex group, which you can do by just clicking the plus button in the vertex groups menu. And I've weight painted the body, so everything that's red will have hair, everything that's blue will not. Um, and you do that just by um, painting all over the body, or you can go up to the weights option at the top and, and set the weight to all, and then um, come remove the blue areas by painting with a weight of zero. So that weight group will show Blender where to put the hairs and where not to put the hairs in um, a step later on. So to add the hair, I'm gonna go into object mode, go to object, quick effects, and quick fur. This is gonna set up all of the basic stuff for the hair curves. I'm gonna rename the curve system to body hair so that I know what it is later. And once you see the hairs on your character, you can start to um, modify the hair modifiers. And they are under the modifiers tab. Now this does use geometry nodes, but you don't have to know how to use geometry nodes to use this. So I'm gonna start adding the hair curve modifiers. The first one is trim hair curves, and I'm gonna move that up right below the surface to form. And you can add nodes by just dragging them from the um, hair assets onto the hair in the viewport, and it'll automatically add them. And then I'm gonna add a shrink wrap hair curves and here is the list in the order that I would use. Um, if you put them in this order, you'll probably have good results. So pause the video here to look at them if you need to. Now I'm going to just start going ahead and tweaking all of these settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is set under uh, set hair curve profile. I'm going to set the radius of the hair down a little bit. And then I play with the shape and that just changes the thickness of the hair and where the thickness occurs. The next one is interpolate hair curves. This one will tell Blender how many hairs and how to distribute them. So the first thing to change is the density. Keep in mind this is a um, number of hair curves per square unit area. So you have to play with the density because your character and mine will have different areas. The next thing is the density mask. I click on the icon to the right of the density mask. It's that little plus. And then you can type in the name of the vertex group that you added with the weight paints and um, select your vertex group and I've applied that it's hard to see so I'm going to change the viewport amount down to 1% um, just so that our viewport performance is a bit faster and it will only show 1% of all of the hair curves so the next one surface to form there's nothing to change so I'll leave that where it is and then I'll move to trim hair curve settings I'm going to click on scale uniform and then just start playing with some of these settings. Um, most importantly, I'm going to change the length of the hairs down to something a lot smaller. And then um, I'm going to change random offset, which allows the hairs to vary in uh, length by a little bit. Now, all these settings you need to tweak on your own to see how you like them. They may or may not work the same for you because our characters probably are not the same. So we'll move on to the settings for hair curves noise. Again, um, just tweak these to your liking. Um, I definitely would make sure you check on the preserve length box at the bottom. That'll make sure that the 
um, noise in the hair doesn't add a bunch of length kind of randomly. Um, it'll just kind of keep everything to be about the same length. So again, tweak all the settings that you think you need to. Um, the next one is frizz hair curves. And each one of these just changes different aspects of the hair curve. So you can, you can disable some of these even if you want to. Um, but here I'm just going to change the factor down so there's less um, frizz. And then make sure you to check on that preserve length box. And finally, shrink wrap hair curves. Make sure um, it says surface in there. Select the body of the character that you're trying to add the curves to. And then I make the uh, offset distance small so that the hair curves bind to the body. If you notice any weird um, banding or artifacting with the hairs following the body too close, just modify the shrink wrap hair curves settings to make it look like it blends a little better. Um, but that's it for the hair curve modifiers. The next thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show the hairs and um, we're going to have to add some materials. So with the body hairs selected, I'm going to add a new material. I'm just going to call that cow fur material. And um, just adding a white material will make it look like it's flat colored. And we're actually not going to want that. So uh, you can see that it already kind of looks like hair, but it doesn't have any light passing through the hairs. So under uh, the material settings, under surface, I'm going to add a principled hair BSDF shader. And this is going to allow Blender to pass light through the hairs and make them look a lot more realistic. So for mine, I'm going to set the type to melanin concentration with very low amount of melanin. You can play with all the other settings and um, change your hair colors as you want. So now I'm just gonna I'm gonna turn on some lights in the scene so you can see what the hairs really look like. And then here, um, I've sped it up. I'm just tweaking a few more of the settings. I made the hairs a little thinner and um, played around with some of the other tweaks. But if you notice that your hairs are not in the right place, you may have to just adjust your weight paint and it does work on the fly so you can do it without restarting this process. So if you weight paint areas to blue, they'll be gone. Okay, so now here I tried to increase the density of the hairs too far and it causes this like hair explosion effect. If this happens to you, just decrease your density. So here you can see that the hairs went back to normal. Um, that's entirely caused by the hairs being too close together. So that is how you fix that problem. If you follow my settings really closely and get that explosion, then just change the density down. Um, but here are some renders of what it looks like. It looks pretty cool. Uh, let me know what you think and if you have any questions. But that is, thanks for watching.